Hi, this is Cheryl here and thank you for clicking on my video today. In this video, I'm going to show you how I assembled this sunflower and then later in the video, I'll show you how I created the center of the sun or, um, the, the uh, sunflower, um, how I got the texture in the middle. So I have my sunflower um, glass pieces already cut and foiled and in this video I'm just showing you how I'm putting it together. I'm first tacking all the little pieces together so that I can remove the pins and then I can solder the piece without interference of the pins that hold everything together at the moment. So first I put my flux down and then I use a little bit of solder. I'm using 6040 solder and my uh, Hakko FX601 soldering iron, which I love. It's set at 360 degrees. I don't need anything but the soldering iron. You plug it in and it's good to go. I have a link to all the materials that I'm using uh, in my description below if you're interested in purchasing any of the items that I'm using. And if you do, I am an affiliate with Amazon, so I will get a small commission from anything that you do purchase and it is at no extra cost to you. It's just a referral fee that I would get for being an affiliate with them. So yeah, I did not do the soldering work on the front, which I always usually do, and I don't know why I didn't do it this time, but um, I tacked it and then I flipped it. And if you see, um, the bead work that I'm getting, I say I'm always striving for a nice rounded bead of solder on my seams. And you'll see that some places it sinks down. And when I flip it over, you'll see what happens. Um, and I think that's because I just didn't solder the front first. But a, quite a bit of solder sunk down through the seams and I had to correct that on the other side. But you'll see. Um, so right now, just kind of putting the flux on and getting my seams to look halfway decent and then I'll go over them again later. I'm going to be going fast forward through most of the assembly process so that we can get to the center of the flower, which is really the, the uh, subject of this video um, and how I did it. So bear with me, stick with the video, and uh, I will slow it down for the portion of the textured center so that you can see exactly what I did. This sunflower was created, the, the design was created in um, Glass High 2000 software, which I have lo I, I love. I've done a few pieces already. Uh, I've designed a few pieces already using that software. It's uh, made for glass, uh, stained glass artists, and you can draw your patterns out. You can trace over top of something to create a pattern. Um, it will help you to make symmetrical patterns. Uh, you can use uh, the different glass colors and, and patterns to get an idea on what your piece will look like using the materials that you have. And uh, it, you, it really is a nice program to work with. It's fr user friendly. And um, if you decide to um, try it out, you can get a free 30 day trial uh, by downloading the trial software. Uh, check it out, see if you like it. Uh, with the 30 day free trial, just for trying it, you will get a bunch of free stained glass patterns and also the free resizer tool that you can use, which is very useful. So just for trying it out, you would get those free items, um, whether you buy or not. If you should decide to buy the software, I would appreciate it if you would use my code 915 or use the link in the description below to purchase it because then I will get a commission as an affiliate with the Dragon's Fly software company who makes Glass Eye 2000. They will give me a commission for just referring someone to buy their program. So that would help me out with my channel 
and um, I would greatly appreciate that. And I thank you if you ever do that. That would be that would be great. Thank you. Um, but if not, the free software um, download is great to try out, and you get the free patterns, and you get um, the free resizer tool, so you can make your patterns bigger or smaller uh, according to your needs. And it's a nice tool to have that um, you can use with your glasswork. So moving along, I am going to do the edges now. And of course, we need to make sure that we use gravity on our side. And you want to um, solder your ends, edges rather, um, by keeping them horizontal and using gravity to allow the solder to sit on the edge and cool a little bit before you move on. Otherwise your solder will run off the uh, piece. So moving quickly through all of this assembly process. My sunflower pieces, as you can see, there's going to be another one I'm going to do off camera. It's already cut out on the right there. Um, they will be for sale on my website, Art by Cheryl Ann, as well as all my other pieces uh, of sunglass pieces, my abstract pieces, and all of my paintings are for sale there, as well as the jewelry that w we create in our studio. Um, it's all for sale on artbycherylann.com, so check out my store and um, send me a comment and let me know what you liked, what you didn't like. I appreciate your feedback. And now I'm just smoothing over my seams, making sure that everything is nice and smooth and I've got nice rounded beads on my seams and they look pretty. checking over the piece, making sure everything looks right. So here we are. I have a, a round circle of 18 gauge bare copper wire. It's not coated. And I made a circle the size the of the circumference of the center of the flower, the center glass piece. And then I did a wire weave of 24 gauge wire between the, uh, in, the, in, in the center of the circle. So as you can see, it, sit, it fits pretty nicely on my center glass piece and sits on top of the solder ring. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to flux it and tin the whole thing, both the back and the front, before I go to put this on my piece. So I've slowed down the um, film so that you can see what I'm doing. And this was, by the way, an experiment. I wanted to get some uh, sunflower seeds in the center of my sunflower. I didn't want it to be plain. And I needed to get some texture in there. And I thought, well, gee, how can I go about doing this? And I didn't want to have cross hatching. I wanted something unique. Um, so I said, oh, well, I can do this. I've made, um, wire wrapped jewelry in this manner and I create, um, what they kind of look like fish nets, um, over things and under things. And so I decided to try a netting over it. It takes a little while to tin the netting, but I think the results are worth the time and effort. 
because it gives you a nice unique piece and all about I'm all about doing things different trying different things and seeing what works and what doesn't work so I wanted to get this uh, some seeds on my sunflower is a virtue and those are like little swirls that I had started off with and ended with and I kind of wrapped them around the wire to hold the circle in form Flipping it over and tinning the front side. Using up some of my solder that dripped down on the counter because I don't like to waste anything. So I try to use as much of material as I can. So by the way, please hit the like button and if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please subscribe. I'm almost at 100 subscribers and this is a very young channel, uh, very new and I hope that um, the materials that I'm putting up, the content that I'm putting up is um, appealing to everyone and if you have any suggestions or ideas, please put them in the comments and I'd be happy to consider them and I thank you for subscribing to my channel but if you could hit the like button and um, that will help my what is it the algorithm of YouTube put my videos up for more people to see which in turn helps make my channel grow so comments and likes are appreciated. So now as you see, it fits up nicely right on top of the solder circle. And I'm going to tack this piece in over top of the solder, wire to the solder center. Of course, I'm gonna hit it with some flux All I need to begin is just a couple of small tacks and then I need to smooth my seams and my tacks so that they look um, pretty. It takes a little patience to get the solder to go where I want it. But once it's tacked in there, um, it's much easier to work with.
seam is giving me a little trouble I'm trying to get it to look just right Okay, so we're now ready to do the center seeds and I flux the wire, uh, netting wire, and I'm adding solder to the points of intersection where the copper wire uh, meets in the netting. And I'm laying little dots of solder at those points. And when you do this, you'll see that the solder falls through the netting and onto the glass. But it's also kind of connected underneath. So I just kept adding solder at those points until the, um, the growth of the seed underneath. I don't know how else to explain it. <clears throat> is um, tall enough <clears throat> or thick enough um, for me to add just a dot of solder on top. So I have a round ball of solder on the top of the netting. <clears throat> Excuse me. And a frog in my throat. So it's kind of like I don't know, what is this, slag tight or slag mite that comes from off the ceiling? I don't know which one is which. Um, but it's kind of like that where it kind of grows as you keep adding material to it. Um, and again, this was an experiment. This is the first time I've ever done it. But it actually worked very nicely. I think it came out cool. And I'll show you off to the side uh, a little bit further on in the video how it looks from the side. And you can see how the seeds formed underneath the wire netting. adding a little more solder to the top of the seeds on top of the wire. So there's some dimension on the top. Okay, so here you can see how it built up underneath. Pretty cool.
So I will definitely be doing this again in other works. And we will move on quickly through adding the solder ring. For hanging it. this um, video is uh, helpful if you want to know how to make the netted ring if you want a video on that let me know in the comments below and I'll be sure to do one for you to show you how I made the netted ring So don't mind my sink. It's the sink off the uh, garage that gets, it's kind of used as a slop sink. Um, but I'm taking some Dawn dish detergent and I'm really scrubbing the uh, <coughs> glass and, and the uh, solder to get all of the flux and any materials that don't belong on there off, both front and back. And it cleans it up nicely and makes it look real nice. You don't realize how much the solder makes the piece look dingy and dirty. <clears throat> and I decided that I'm going to use some black patina <clears throat> and change my solder over to a black. And I'm using a scruffy old brush that works really well for scrubbing into the nooks and crannies of the piece. Um, Someone made a comment in my last video, you could use a toothbrush. Yes, you can use a toothbrush. I don't have any extra toothbrushes laying around. I threw all my old ones away. So I had this old scruffy brush, so I used this. Works fine. But if you have an old scruffy toothbrush left around, you know, an old one, I sure use that as well. That will work too. And I'm just using a throwaway container from, I don't know, I think it's a Horm Hormel meal. Um, so I don't waste too much of my uh, patina. And now I'm using a red scotch Bright pad and I'm just scuffing the tops of my seeds. I don't want to do the whole piece this way because I want my seeds to show. I want them to stand out. And here's the piece done. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And uh, I want to thank everyone for subscribing to my channel again. I really do appreciate it. It's helping my channel to grow. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.